Hi guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Natasha. You might know me as Planted and Platinum on TikTok and Instagram. I asked you guys to vote on my next video and I am here to deliver. Welcome to part one of my 2024 Hoya tour. Let's get into the video. All right, everybody grab a cozy cup of coffee or whatever you're drinking this morning and let's get started. Hoya number one is my Hoya Polynera Green. This is commonly called the fishtail Hoya. You can see why the leaves resemble fishtails. It is a beautiful Hoya with dark green foliage. If you want to keep the dark green foliage, you will want to keep it in medium light. If you put it in too high of light, the leaves will start to bleach. And if you put it in too low of light, the plant will not grow. Hoya Polynera Green is a thirstier Hoya, but it will cascade down any plant lover's shelf if you give it enough tender, loving care. Hoya Polynera Green, friends. Hoya number two is Hoya Polynera Brogé or Hoya Polynera Silver. This Hoya is sister to the Polynera Green, but it has exceptionally silver leaves, which makes it a beautiful Hoya to grow. This Hoya will also cascade down your plant shelf and will look so pretty doing so. I have mine growing in pond and no drainage, and she is just living her best life. Hoya Polynera Brogé. Hoya number three is my Hoya Croniana Green. This Hoya is native to the Philippines and is known for being a prolific grower. So if you're looking for a starter Hoya that grows fast and blooms easily, this one is for you. She has very cute, small foliage with little ab-like features on her leaves. She has little splashes along her leaves and is so so adorable. This is one of my favorite Hoyas. I just let her sit, give her lots of water, and she is so, so happy. Hoya Croniana Green. Hoya number four is my Hoya Carnosa Wilbur Graves China. This Hoya originated from a cellar in China as a no ID Carnosa hybrid. It has generous silver splashes along its foliage and long slender leaves. This is a beautiful and attractive Hoya that is very popular among the plant community. Such a beautiful choice if you're looking for a silvery Hoya. Hoya Carnosa, Wilbur Graves, China. Hoya number five is my Hoya Crassipetiolata Splash. Hoya Crassipetiolata Splash is a mouthful, but it is such a beautiful Hoya. This is one of my favorite silvery Hoyas because of the way the silver presents on the leaves. It has such a unique splashy silver and it grows super fast. It's also a little bit of a thirstier Hoya, but it's such a beautiful, beautiful selection. This one is going to need a trellis very soon. I just have it staked on a wooden stick and it's growing in pond with lots of algae. <laughs> Hoya Crassipetiolata Splash. Number six is Hoya Coriaceae Splash. Hoya Coriaceae Splash is a beautiful silvery splashy Hoya that has very large leaves with silver splashes on them. This Hoya also comes in the silver variety with like full silver leaves. It's such a stunning Hoya to add to your collection. It also roots super easily and quickly. I have many propagations rooting for my upcoming plant markets, so I'm excited to share this Hoya with other Hoya lovers out there. Hoya Coriaceae Splash. Number seven, Hoya globulosa, native to Borneo and Sumatra. This Hoya is a very prehistoric looking Hoya with a very interesting venation along its leaves. It's got long, narrow leaves with a glossy finish on the top and on the back. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but it is so, so fuzzy. No, you won't be able to. Super fuzzy, so this is a Hoya that I like to pet often. <laughs> it's very cool and rewarding. But this Hoya I found to be a bit more challenging. I've been doing research on it and it says to pretty much let it dry out 
before you water it in the cooler months and to keep it in lower light so that the foliage doesn't bleach. And then in the warmer months, you should water it normally again. So that's interesting. And I'm going to try that this year to see if I can get my Hoya globulosa to grow some more. She is currently working on some baby leaves, which I'm so excited to see. So I think I'm doing something right. It took me a while to figure this Hoya out and I still haven't completely figured her out, but I really want to because she is such a stunner. Hoya globulosa. Number eight is Hoya erythrina. Hoya erythrina is a special Hoya because when she sun stresses, she sun stresses dark, dark purple. It is absolutely gorgeous. I will insert a clip in here for you to see what she looks like when she's sun stressed. I currently have moved her to my tent so that I can try and get her sun stressed. I did have her sun stressed at one point, but I moved her out of my tent. So I don't know why I did that, but I moved her back in. So we shall see. And hopefully I can give you some cool updates with her dark purple foliage. She's got like ruffled edges, which makes her super unique to other Hoyas. And she's got venation on the back of her leaves, which is really interesting, and little subtle silver splashes along her leaves. She's a very attractive Hoya and one of my favorites in my collection. Number nine, we have Hoya serigeoensis. I probably butchered that name because I have no idea how to say it, but it is a mouthful. <laughs> This is such a beautiful Hoya. This Hoya sun stresses so nicely. She's a quick grower in my experience, loves to shoot vines, and has these beautiful, thick, like succulent-like, veiny leaves, which are to die for. I mean, look at her. She is such a stunner. I have her growing in pond. And she has been rooting up like a dream, looking very, very nice. Hoya serigeoensis. Number 10, we have Hoya fuwawensis. This Hoya was formerly called Hoya fuwa because it was discovered in the fuwa wildlife sanctuary in Bang Can province in northeastern Thailand. It's a very beautiful Hoya similar to Hoya caudata sumatra with its leaf and blooms. I will insert photos here for you. It's such a beautiful, splashy Hoya that loves to vine out. And I'll probably need to put her on a trellis soon so that she can just live her best life. She gets ruffled leaf edges as she grows as well, which is another similarity to the Hoya caudata sumatra. But this is number 10, Hoya fuwawensis. Number 11 is Hoya Serpens. This is such an adorable little small leafed Hoya. It gets its name because the leaves resemble snakes' heads, which is really, really cool. This Hoya has silver splashes on its leaves, like very subtle silver splashes, and is known to be a trailer. This Hoya can tolerate lower light, but is a slower grower. You'll see another one of my varieties of Hoya Serpens in part two of this video, Hoya Serpens. Number 12 is Hoya Linearis. Hoya Linearis is a fuzzy trailing Hoya with cylindrical leaves. She is a thirstier Hoya that grows quickly once she gets going. Her beautiful white blooms are said to smell like lemons. So that's fun. I always love a citrus smell. I think it's very refreshing. Hoya linearis has such cute little dainty leaves that are so delicate. I can't wait to fill up my pot. Number 13 is Hoya Jennifer, thought to be a hybrid of Hoya incrustata and Hoya finlaysonii. This Hoya is quite challenging for me and a slow grower. Hoya Jennifer has very veiny foliage and beautiful blooms. I can't wait for mine to grow proper and bloom for me one day. She's such a veiny little cutie pie. Number 14 is Hoya Green Apple Malang, also known as Hoya UT033. This is an epiphytic Hoya from Southeast Asia. This Hoya sun stress is red and has a reputation for not flowering until it's quite mature. Mine has a little bit of pink splash. 
because it's getting close to my barinas. I'm kind of thinking of putting this one in my grow tent too to see if I can sun stress it. It's such a pretty veiny Hoya and one that's not commonly talked about. I don't really see this Hoya around too much. I actually got this one from my friend, so I was really excited to add a Hoya to my collection that was not very common. Hoya Green Apple Malang or Hoya UT033. Number 15 is Hoya Svetlana. My Hoya Svetlana is very, very sun-stressed because I wanted to see what she looked like sun-stressed. But she is a hybrid of Hoya DKA and Hoya Finlaysoniae. Hoya Svetlana has large, round, veiny leaves with a pointed tip. You can see there. Super, super cute. She's a splashy Hoya, if not sun-stressed, but also beautiful when you do sun-stress her. I recently just traded a cutting of my Hoya Svetlana that was just like a splashy silver, and it was really pretty too. So I just took this one out of my grow tent and I put it on my Hoya shelf, and I want to see what happens. Maybe I'll get some splashier leaves on there. She's a little bit more challenging, but once you figure her out, she's so rewarding. Number 16 is Hoya Croniana Super Silver. A lot of people call this Hoya Lacunosa Super Silver as well. I don't know which variety it actually is, but I call it Hoya Croniana Super Silver. This is another beautiful silvery Hoya that is more common now. It's just hit the big box stores last year, so it's definitely had its rounds and is more affordable now. It's a very beautiful Hoya that also has some like splashier leaves. Like look at this one here. Very cute. It's like dark green with silver splashes on it. And then we have like the full silver leaves. So it does vary with its splashiness quite a bit. It loves to trail and is another easy um, bloomer. This one likes a lot of water in my opinion, so it's more on the thirsty side. But she is super cute. This one was a gift from a friend and I am just absolutely obsessed. Number 17 is Hoya Clandestina. Hoya Clandestina is formerly known as Hoya Polystasha. This Hoya has huge leaves with a hint of red on the undersides. It might be hard to pick up on the camera, but oh no, you can see it. There's definitely a hint of red on the undersides and it's so pretty. This Hoya has two colors of flowers. They come in pink and yellow, and I'm not sure what color mine are, so I'm really excited to find out. Mine has a cute little baby leaf on the way, and it's like a Jurassic prehistoric looking um, Hoya. This is a newer leaf. It's super glossy and like shiny. This one grows super quickly for me. Um, it roots up really easily. I just have mine in an aeroid mix with a Lekka Reservoir on the bottom, so no drainage. And she just goes, as soon as you just put her on your shelf, she'll just grow vine after vine after vine. I have propagated her many times. She propagates very easily. And she's also another one that's not super common. So if you get a chance to pick this Hoya up, I would suggest doing it. She's a very rewarding Hoya. Number 18 is Hoya Mirabilis. This is my favorite Hoya in my collection. She is something to swoon over. I love her so, so much. She has quite dark foliage with a hint of silver splash along the leaves and rippled edges. She's native to Thailand. This Hoya was first called Hoya species Kaolayam, as this is where it was found. She has beautiful green flowers that smell like grass and are heavy on the nectar, making this a very messy bloomer. The light's kind of washing her out, but she has like almost black foliage when she's sitting on my plant shelf and she just trails. She's super pretty. Really, really unique and interesting Hoya. I do believe there are two clones of this plant, a clone one and a clone two. I'm not sure which one that I have, but yeah, she is so, so pretty, friends. Hoya Mirabilis. Number 19 is Hoya Rosita. Hoya Rosita is a hybrid of Hoya Wyettii and Hoya Sangii. This Hoya has long and slender green leaves with a maroon tinge on the leaf tips. Hoya Rosita sun stresses to a brownish red color and will catch the eye of any visitor in your home. 
she is like, she reminds me of like a purple and green because her maroon is so dark. She does sun stress easily. Number 20 is Hoya Hushkliana Vergara. This is another one of my favorite Hoyas. She is literally the cutest little thing. Like, look at her. Oh my goodness. So if you want to grow rounder leaves on your Hoyas, keep them in high light and the leaves will be chubby little round leaves. And if you want them to have more like slender, bigger leaves, then a lower light is said to do that for them. Not like super low light, but lower than like full sun stressed light. Well, I have a couple propagations of her that will be available in my reptile expo and plant market coming up as well. So I'm also excited to share this one with some Hoya lovers. Poppy. Number 21 is Hoya Skinneriana. So Hoya Skinneriana is a variety of Carnosa that has beautiful pink and white flowers. It's a large leafed Hoya with curved leaves and silver splashes. This one was gifted to me by my friend who has since moved away, so it's nice to have a plant to remember her by. I think this Hoya is beautiful and I love the large curved leaves. I think that they are so unique. Love this one. Number 22 is Hoya Bella Lita Bui. So this is the inner variegated variety of Hoya Bella with its beautiful yellow variegation, quick growth rate, and cute small leaves. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to add this beauty to your collection. Number 23 is Hoya Solijamiana. Another one, I don't know if I said the name proper, but that's how it sounds. So this one is so pretty. I have mine sun stressed, a couple of the leaves anyways. It's a long, slender Hoya that sun stresses red and purple. This is a very unique Hoya and has the prettiest flowers. I have mine in a iridescent pot that I thrifted from the thrift store and I am obsessed, okay? It's so pretty. She's getting a new leaf and the new leaves are so cute because they're so long and slender. Oh, I just can't get enough of this Hoya. It's so pretty, but it's been kind of challenging for me to grow. So wish me luck, friends. She did have a little peduncle under this leaf, but I didn't do anything. Oh, you can't really see. Hoya Silijamiana. Number 24 is Hoya Dikie. Hoya Dikie has heart-shaped thick leaves with beautiful dark green venation. Hoya Dikie is from Sumatra where it lives in a lush rainforest. How nice would it be to live in a lush rainforest in Sumatra? Oh my goodness, I just cannot get enough of this Hoya. It is so stinking cute and it has a new little leaf coming in there. Ugh. So nice. I've cut this Hoya a couple times too. A lot of my Hoyas you'll see have a lot of cuts on them. I like to propagate them and sell them or trade them. Trading Hoyas is one of my favorite things to do. This is a very, very beautiful Hoya. Number 25 is my Hoya New Guinea Ghost. Hoya New Guinea Ghost has beautiful silvery leaves that sun stress purple. In my experience, this Hoya appreciates bright light and a trellis. Once this plant establishes, it is a very, very quick grower. It will just take right off. But like, can we talk about how pretty those sun stress leaves are? Oh my goodness. And mine, I recently chopped it, grew like a weed right after I chopped it, and it shot off two vines from like where I cut it. Isn't that so cute? Hoya New Guinea Ghost. This is actually Hoya Nicholsonier New Guinea Ghost. So this is a Nicholsonier variety. I just love her. Number 26 is Hoya Latifolia Snow Queen. This is a beautiful Hoya with massive, massive glossy leaves. It's a large leaf Hoya with bright silver splashy leaves. It's native to the forests of Indonesia and Malaysia. So I had a full plant but I traded a piece to one of my plant friends. So I chopped the rest of it up because I wanted to give him the bottom cutting that was rooted. So I have a couple extra cuttings of this one as well, but they're just rooting. It wasn't too long ago that I chopped it, but this is a beautiful latifolia variety that can get even like more splashes. It is truly a stunning and unique latifolia. Look how big that leaf is, like that's insanity. 
Hoya latifolia, Snow Queen, friends. Number 27 is my Hoya Crimson Queen. I think this is the largest Hoya in my collection. I don't chop this one very often. I have this one displayed in my master bathroom and it just sits on my shelf up on my windowsill and looks stunning. Isn't this a cute pot? I love it. Anyhow, <laughs> I just have her in pawn and she is doing so, so good. Like, look at those roots. Oh my goodness. But yeah, Hoya Crimson Queen is a classic but gorgeous Hoya with new leaves that come in with some pink that will fade to white, a staple in any Hoya lover's collection, and a great beginner Hoya that is affordable. These are her newer leaves, and look how big that one is. So pretty. I just love Hoya Crimson Queen. It is truly one of the most beautiful Hoyas out there quite white at the top. She did have some full white vines, but they did die off. Sometimes this Hoya will shoot out full white vines and they will last for a long time if you have it in nice highlight. But they will eventually die off because they can't photosynthesize. Hoya Crimson Queen. Number 28 is Hoya Fichii. Hoya Fichii is a slow-growing, veiny Hoya that originates from the Philippines. Its sunstress is red when given enough light. Oh, we have a visitor. This is my dog, Jasper. She is such a sweetheart. Sit, Jess. Oops. Oh. Oh. Say hi. Can you say hi? And she is just a, the nicest dog. She's so good with the kids. And she's so calm and gentle. She's such a beautiful, beautiful dog. I'm sure you'll see her many more times on my channel. Number 29 is Hoya Croniana Black. So this Hoya has very small, delicate little leaves that are quite dark. It has attractive dark foliage with teardrop-shaped leaf and speckles. Let me see if I can get you guys a closer look. She's not supposed to be on a trellis. This Hoya Croniana is a vining, or sorry, a trailing Hoya. So I don't know why I put her on a trellis, but we did that. <laughs> so we'll see if she likes to be grown on a trellis. She hasn't really grown too much for me, so I don't think so. <laughs> but maybe I'll take her off. But she just looks so cute on this little trellis. She does have some new leaves coming in, though. So that's adorable. Like, look at that, how dark that is. It's such a pretty Hoya, Hoya Croniana Black. Number 30 is Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. This Hoya has succulent leaves with silver flecks and interesting veins. This plant has dark margins that contrast beautifully with the green color of the leaf. I chopped mine a couple times, so it's still pretty small. But like, look how glossy the new leaves come in. It's so gorgeous. It's hard to show you the black veins. I can't really see them. They come out more in highlights. Maybe I should put this one in my tent. But it's super pretty. It's one that I had on my wish list for a really long time. And I actually found it locally in the garden center. So I was pretty surprised to see it there. Because this one doesn't usually pop up in the garden centers. So yeah, that was a good little find. It's always nice when you can find a wish list plant in the garden center. Number 31 is a very special Hoya in my collection because I got it from the one and only Wild Fern. Wild Fern is one of my biggest inspirations in the plant hobby. She's such a sweet human and she has an amazing channel. I have been watching her for a couple years now. I started off watching Plant Arena and then all of a sudden I found Wild Fern and I was so excited. And then I found out she lives in the same city as me, which is so crazy. So she gifted me this Hoya Calamantan and look how beautiful it is. It has got the coolest veins. It's an epiphytic Hoya originating from Borneo. This large leaf Hoya has beautiful black veins and hard glossy leaves. So I do believe this is a species of Callistophila. I have had this one before as well, so I'm familiar growing it. Has a little baby leaf coming in, and I kept her a little tag. How cute. 
and it's in this spiky 3D red pot, which I think is so, so cool. It's like, don't mess with my delicate little leaves, right? <laughs> oh, I want to see if I can get it out and show you the roots. There we go. So this one has been rooting up quite nicely in just a chunky aeroid mix, a chunky soilless aeroid mix, and a little orchid pot. Hoya Kalimantan. And number 32 is my Hoya AH0734. This is an epiphytic Hoya that has long slender leaves, black veins, and sun stresses red. This has been a challenging Hoya for me, but is one that I hope will grow into a big and beautiful plant one day. It has extremely veiny, prehistoric, thick and rigid leaves. Like this is one of the thicker, slender leaved Hoya leaves I've ever felt. And it has really cute silver splashes. And Sunstress is red. It's got a little bit of Sunstress on that leaf there, you can see. It kind of blends in with my sweater, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, this one has been a slow, slow grower. So I just have it in one of my humidity boxes right now, seeing if maybe that will help. So if you have this Hoya in your collection and you have some tips and tricks for me, please leave them in the comments because I would be so happy to figure out some better ways to grow this Hoya because I love it so, so much. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for my 2024 Hoya collection tour. If you liked this video, please leave me a comment, hit that like button and the notification bell to be notified of when I upload my part two of my Hoya 2024 houseplant tour. Thank you so much for joining me and have yourselves a lovely day. Bye.